Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 84. So right now we are in the middle of the Finding Food Freedom Coaching Experience Week and it's been great having so many of you take part, seeking to understand your relationship with food better and supporting one another in the Facebook community that we have set up just for you doing the Finding Food Freedom Coaching Experience. If you're listening to this and you would like to come in and watch the trainings or have them come through to your podcast feed so that you can listen whilst driving or walking or even doing the housework, you're really, really welcome. You have until the end of the first week of May to do this. So please go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash freedom to register. I'm also really pleased to tell you that the enrolment is now open for the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. And if you enroll before midnight on the 1st of May, you will have the opportunity to take advantage of some great savings and bonuses. So do come and check out all of the details at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash enroll. That's with one L. And as a podcast listener, you may also like to know that as of May, all of the trainings and coaching calls in the Academy will be available for you to listen to in your own time via a private podcast feed, making it easier than ever to learn how to create a relationship with food, your yourself and your life that you love. And I don't plan to open the Academy for monthly enrolment again until September. So if this is something that you're interested in, do come and check it out and join us now and take advantage of these special offers. And because I know that many of you are curious about what it's like inside of the Academy, I thought I would share a little of the work we have been doing this month. And so you're going to get to listen to one of the Academy lessons for this podcast episode. To give you a little more context, during the month of April inside of the academy, members have been focusing on the relationship between food, their feelings and the urge they feel to eat foods to help them feel better. Now that could be to avoid or numb a negative emotion or it could be to treat or reward or help themselves relax in the evening or it could be purely about wanting the pleasure that eating that food gives them in the moment. And they've got some great results. The changes they are sharing are very inspiring and so I wanted to share a couple with you here anonymously of course. So one member shared, I have learned that I can overcome unhelpful impulses when I employ the tools I have learned within Claire McKenzie's online groups. It may seem hard at the time but actually it's an interesting journey of discovery to become a happy and relaxed me who experiences life to the full. Another member said, I want to feel As I do feel happy, more knowledgeable and accomplished, I will remember to think that it has been worth it. All the exploration and understanding of how my brain works. What I used to think was failure is now teaching me so much and I'm progressing every day. In my mind, the weight loss has become much more insignificant in gaining a good relationship with food and that as I achieve that, I know my weight will eventually come down. Another member shared, I've just realized something massive. Since I've got my relationship with food mostly on track, I can now show up in life as me. No lies, no excuses, no secrets. I've never been able to be me before. So emotional. And then another member shared, celebrating three pounds lost today, which means I've hit my first stone lost and gone under the stone mark that has been eluding me for years. It's been slow and steady thanks to Claire and this program, whereas before it was up and down like a yo-yo. Doing the urge work has made such a difference. Thanks, Claire. Okay, just wanted to share those with you because I think they are so inspiring. So listen in now to the lesson that kicked off these results on the first of this month and get a real feel of what it's like inside the academy. Okay, so here you go. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this Food, Feelings and Urges Deep Dive Month. So I am really looking forward to this month focusing on working with you to help you learn and practice the skill of feeling 
your food urges and feeling other emotions in your body. One of the most useful skills that you can learn on your journey to creating the relationship with food that you want is to learn the skill of feeling your feelings and emotions instead of eating in response to them and instead of resisting them. And if you do this work daily for a month, you will have a different relationship with food and yourself at the end of the month than you have right now. You've already learned lots inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. And this is your opportunity to bring all of that together and practice it so that not overeating becomes so much easier. And there are multiple purposes to doing this specific work. Number one, you will learn to feel emotion, which many of you may not ever have really sort of learned to feel before. We either sort of don't notice emotion or we avoid it or we push it away or we eat in response to it or we do other things in response to it. We do other activities to avoid feeling what is going on in our bodies um, and to try to mask that by feeling better. Whether, as I say, that is through eating, whether it's through shopping, whether it's through, you know, sort of crashing out and binge watching Netflix, all sorts of different things that it's really normal and human to do because we never learn to get comfortable with our different emotions in our body. You may only know how to react to or push away emotions. And that's okay. We've also, we all got to start somewhere. So if you don't know how to feel your emotions in your body right now, that's fine. It's something that we just practice. And I often use the analogy of sort of learning to surf. It's only by practicing it over and over that you will learn how to feel your emotions in your body. Okay. So learning how you feel emotions means that you will have less dislike for experiencing them. You will find yourself less often at the effect of your emotions. You will be able to handle things in life that you currently find challenging much more easily. Learning how to feel your emotion is putting yourself in the driving seat of your life. It's you no longer being at the effect of your primal brain and responses to lead you to do things that don't serve you in the long run. So let me dive in and tell you more about how what this is all about. So some of you will be familiar and know what I'm talking about when I sort of talk about food urges. But you may be wondering what counts as an urge, because how do you know when you have a genuine reason for wanting to eat what you want to eat versus it being an urge? So and what I would encourage you to think about, and again, like everything, this is going to, you know, the more you practice this, the more you observe yourself going through this process, the more in tune you are going to be, the more aware you're going to become of how you truly want to be eating versus how you want to be eating when your primal brain is in charge. So what counts as a food urge, I would say, is anytime you get the desire or the compulsion to eat in a way that is not aligned with you having the relationship with food that you want and being the weight that you want to be. And that can become very, very tricky, can't it? Because we don't really know which part of our brain that we're listening to when we make food decisions in the moment. So what we do, and you will all be familiar with this inside of the academy, is that we use food planning to help us ascertain the reasons why we want to be eating what we're eating. So when we're planning our meals and we're planning our food, we're making that decision consciously ahead of time with our human brain. And we can be confident that we're not at the effect of our sort of primal desires. So planning is an important part of this process. And I also want to sort of say with regards to planning, be very aware and conscious of your planning, that it feels good and doable and easy and achievable. So your planning wants to be aligned with how you imagine yourself eating for life to be the weight that you want to be. Your plan shouldn't feel like a very restrictive diet. And if it does feel like a very restrictive diet, then I really encourage you to look at your plan and to see if you want to make some tweaks and changes to it. Okay, so next I want you to consider the sort of the pathway, the process, if you like, that is taking place when these food urges, when you get the desire to eat something that is not on your plan and you know it's sort of a way in eating that you don't want to be doing for the long term. It's not going to help you get the results that you want to get. And I think there's two ways that this can happen. Most often what happens is we want to eat in response to other emotions that we are feeling that we don't like, that feel uncomfortable. And I'm just talking through the pathway for this here. Now, I also want to say, remember, this happens so quickly within your brain that you may not even be aware of what is going on for you and why you eat when you want to eat. That is really normal. A part of this process is doing the work of slowing down what is happening for you through reflection, through using discovery worksheets to help you uncover what is going on. So anytime that you get the urge to eat, I'm probably, so I almost want you to start at the end of this diagram. So if we let's start at the urge and then work backwards. So anytime you get the urge to eat, 
It is driven by a thought of wanting to eat whatever it is. It could be, I want it, it's delicious, I deserve it, I deserve a treat, I want to feel better. Oftentimes, these thoughts are in our subconscious. We're not aware of them. We don't see them. We might tell ourselves, I don't know why I wanted to eat. I don't know what I was thinking. That is all very normal. But somewhere there will be a thought. And as I said, it could be that this thought, this process has taken place so many times. It's delegated to the lower parts of your brain that it just sort of feels like it's instantaneous. It feels like you're out of control. But I promise that you're not. So before we have any urge to eat, there's always going to be a thought preceding that. And it may be that we have that thought subconsciously in response to another feeling. So if we're looking at the top line of this diagram here, I'm working through this first. So we have the urge to eat that's created by a thought. I just want it. I want to feel better. I deserve a treat. That thought will have taken place in response to a feeling or an emotion that we are not experienced at feeling in our body. We're not comfortable feeling it. We don't want it to be there. This could be literally any emotion. It could be boredom. It could be frustration. It could be feeling burdened. A lot of the times we have a feeling of unrelaxed. We want to eat to relax. We have a feeling of this sort of like burdened, hard done by just discomfort. Sometimes that discomfort is caused by what's going on in our own heads. We have thoughts about our day that lead us to feel the word that always comes to mind to me is hard done by, but it's some level of discomfort. We want to eat to feel better. So through this process, we're also looking to identify what that emotion is, because the more you do this work, the more you will find patterns for you coming up for you when you get that feeling, that emotion that you don't want to feel. And then you have the thought, I want to eat something. You want you get the urge to eat in order to feel better. And of course, that feeling, whether it's bored, is also created from a thought. And again, that thought you may be very unaware of. If you have be, are used to feeling bored in your day or uninterested, that is likely something that has come up for you so many times. You're not even aware of it. You're just aware of being a little bit agitated, a bit uncomfortable, a bit bored. You just sort of like want to do something. But there's always going to be a trigger or a circumstance. Now, sometimes the trigger or the circumstance may be really obvious. Sometimes it might be that we have, you know, opened a letter and it has, you know, it's a letter that we didn't want to receive. And so we feel uncomfortable as a result of receiving that letter. And we might have a thought, it might be a bill and we think, oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay that. I shouldn't have to pay that. It's not fair. We feel the discomfort of that in our body. And then we have a thought, even though we're not aware of it, we might decide we want to distract ourselves from that feeling by going and finding something to eat in order to feel better. Other times, other triggers or circumstances are much more general. That They are really our day. And it might just be that you have had thoughts about your day being hard or difficult or boring so many times that you're not even aware that your day, how you go about doing your day-to-day -day activities are creating thoughts and feelings for you that lead you to want to eat in order to feel better. So another one that often comes up is feelings of overwhelm. So this sort of, you know, the busyness, we have so much to do. We're constantly on. We never, you know, very rarely stop in the world in which we live today. We have these never ending to do lists. We have no time for ourselves. And when we start to feel the effects of that, always created through our thinking, but we're just not aware of it. We feel the discomfort of it. We feel the overwhelm. We can't escape the chatter in our minds of all of the things we're telling ourselves that we should be doing. And this doesn't feel comfortable. Again, it creates a certain discomfort, which is, we can sometimes just describe feelings and emotion. It creates a discomfort. Isn't nice. It's not nice having it there in our body. And so then again, we have a thought, if I eat something, I will feel better. Okay. So that's sort of the, the top level there. That's what's sort of working, taking you backwards through that. Oftentimes we're eating in response to another feeling that we're having that we don't want to feel. Other times, you know, the trigger, thought, urge, cycle or process or pathway, if you like, is much more obvious and much quicker. And I think this occurs when we see food and that triggers our desire for it. Somebody gives us a box of chocolate. We entertain or we cater. We have a social occasion at home and then you know everybody goes and the dessert is left there on the side and I see it and I want to eat it. Other circumstances like this might be going into a coffee shop and spotting the cake on the counter that looks very nice. Or it could even be, you know, listening to something on the radio and somebody's talking about some food and your brain goes, oh, I really fancy that. So this sort of trigger is really, this pathway is really born out of your learned behavior, your learned over desire 
for foods, because as we know, these foods that we um, tend to be the ones that are processes, processed and refined, create more dopamine than normal other foods to be released in our brain. So we build up this pattern of over desiring them. Okay, so those are the different types of pathways that tend to happen before we get the urge to eat something. So just to clarify, the work that you do this month on feeling feelings, feeling emotion, feeling urges, you may be doing it either on the urge itself, or you may want to be doing it on the emotion that happens before you have the thought and the urge. Both are equally useful and valuable and count, validate, you know, count towards the work that you're doing this month. Okay, so let's just recap then also the the process. And this is, you know, you'll be very familiar with this. If you want to look at this process again, look at some work around this again, I encourage you to look at the emotional eating lesson in the food for thought. I'll drop a link to that with the in the comments that go with this training. So as I mentioned, we always want to be planning because that is going to help us identify to spot when these feelings and emotions and food urges are coming up for us. So planning is important. We also want to practice staying aware and conscious. It can be really easy to create our plan for the day and then totally forget about it and not look back and check in with ourselves to see what it is we said we were going to have for lunch or for our snack. So we plan for the day and then we just go about our day and eat regardless so we want to stay aware and conscious we also would then want to notice when we want to eat differently to how we planned and it might be that we end up eating differently or it might be that just we're really aware of it and it is at that point ideally before you end up eating something differently that i want you to drop into your body and feel the emotion. And there's a worksheet available with this training to help you do that. And again, if you look at the emotional eating training in the food for thought process, I talk you through that there as well. So you want to drop into your body and feel the emotion. Feeling the emotion is different to resisting it. But when you start off practicing feeling the emotion, you don't really know what it is like to feel it. You only know what it is like to resist it. So you might be unsure if you're feeling or if you're resisting. That is okay. One of the ways to notice is to observe how tense you are in your body. If you are tense, if you've got sort of clenched fist, if you feel tension in your throat, and in your neck, then you're likely resisting. So I want you to practice relaxing and wanting the emotion to be there in your body so that you can allow yourself to feel it. After you've done the work of feeling the emotion, I want you to track what has gone on for you. And I want you to reward yourself. Now, there's a number of ways that you can reward yourself. So the tracking part is important, but also the rewarding part is important because the rewarding part gives your brain a little tiny bit of dopamine, which your brain likes, and it's going to encourage your brain to do this work more often. It's going to make this work more enjoyable for your brain. And you can reward yourself with what I call an urge jar, which is where you get a container. I encourage you suggest you get a glass jar. And then each time you do this work, you put a marble or a pebble or a bead or some people use pound coins into the jar to reward yourself, to acknowledge that you've done this work. And if you have the reward jar, the urge jar, put it somewhere visual where you can see it frequently because your brain is going to like that. If you haven't got a jar or you don't want to do a jar, then the other thing that you can do is create a reward chart for yourself. You might want to get some, you know, colored A4 card or A3 card and some stars or something like that. Again, put it somewhere where it's visible because your brain is going to like it. And then the last part of this process is really the reflection part of it. We want to be learning every single time these food urges come up for us because that is going to help us perfect our skill. It's going to help us, you know, practice more easily. Remember using the analogy of the baby learning to walk each time he or she pushes herself back up, each time they fall down, they use their, they build up their strength. They learn to become more flexible. They get their balance. They are connecting those pathways in their brain that is going to make walking become so easily, so easy, so automated, something that they don't even think about. And we want you that the same to happen for you for this experience of allowing, allowing feelings and allowing the urges to be there in your body. So you want to do the work of reflecting so that you can learn from your experience and move forward. Okay, so there's a number of tools to help you. You have got the daily feelings and urges tracker which I am going to show you an example of that in just a moment. And there are two versions of that. There is a printable PDF 
you can't fill this PDF in, but you can print it off and write on it if that is what you prefer to do. But for those of you who prefer to do things electronically, I'm also putting in an Excel spreadsheet for you for this work this month. So you've got your daily feelings and urges tracker. I encourage you to track down every single urge that comes up for you, whether you eat in response to it or you don't. You've also got the processing a feeling worksheet that talks you through the process of checking into your body to notice where these feelings, these vibrations are coming up for you. You've also got the successful urge worksheet. When you allow yourself to feel the emotion, this worksheet will help you again, reinforce what you were noticing, what you were observing, what was going on for you there. And you also have the discovery worksheet. Every time you eat something that is not on your plan, I encourage you to do a discovery worksheet because it's going to help you identify those thoughts that create the feelings, the emotions, the urges. Okay. You know, as I talked you through the process earlier, I said a lot of them are in our sort of lower consciousness. The more we ask our brain what is going on for us, the more we're going to uncover those answers. And the discovery worksheet is going to help you do just that. And then lastly, you've got the feelings list. I encourage you to get practice identifying those feelings that you want to eat so that you don't feel. The more that you can be curious about what you're feeling and sort of step into the feeling, the easier it's going to be to help you uncover the thought that pairs with it. Because when you can identify how you're feeling, you can ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? And when you ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? You're going to be identifying the thought that you're thinking about the circumstance that you probably think is causing the feeling for you. Okay, now onto the exciting bit. This month, we have got prizes. And I was loving the stationary discussion in in the community earlier this week. And so I've got prizes for you. I've got stationary prizes for you, which I'm quite excited about. So there are two ways that you can win these prizes. One, First one is by doing a demonstration of the work that you're doing. That essentially means sharing the work that you're doing, um, whether it is through you know, a copy of the, the tracker, which is probably what I encourage you to do, is to share your tracker um, on a weekly basis. And I'll, I'll sort of figure out the best way for you to share that in a couple of days when I, when I give more thought to it. But essentially, I'm going to be checking in with you once a week. I'm going to be inviting you to share the work that you're doing. And those of you who have done lots of the work where, um, will be entered into either a prize draw, or if it's really obvious, if you've got a first, second and third, then I'll, I'll pick the people from that perspective as well. So so that you can win by doing the work and demonstrating that you are doing it. And first prize is a self-care stationery bundle. Second prize is a vegan leather bound notebook. And third prize is a meal planning pad. But that's not the only way you can win those prizes. The other way that you can win the prizes is by just sharing what is coming up for you and supporting others in the Facebook community. I love the Facebook community that we have. I so appreciate everyone who is sharing, everyone who is helping others and supporting others, everyone who is being very courageous and being vulnerable in what you're sharing. I think it is so valuable and so useful and such an important part of this program that really helps everybody. So I really want to appreciate those of you that do that. And so Facebook's very good at telling me who's sort of engaged, who's sharing, who's commenting, who's doing everything. And so this month, at the end of the month, we'll take a look and um, we'll gift some prizes to those of you who are doing that. And again, it's first, second and third prize, exactly the same as it was for the other one. So that is something I'm really pleased to be doing. Now, the last slide that I've got here for you is um, a copy of the urges and feelings tracker. So I just quickly wanted to go through what is on this. So I encourage you to just pop down the date. I encourage you to say whether your food plan is done, yes or no. And this is for your own accountability. I encourage you then to reflect back and see how many urges you noticed came up for you throughout the day. And it could be urges, it could be feelings that, you know, preceded it, but essentially you get the urge to eat something. Then I want you to make a note of how many of those you allowed. Now, allowed urges doesn't mean that you allow yourself to eat. It means you allow yourself to feel it in your body. Okay. Another, sometimes I think of using the word processed for, uh, for allowing ourselves to feel these urges or emotions, but I don't want to do that because sometimes when we think we process them, we almost have this expectation that we should do something and then they go away. Oftentimes they will go away, but sometimes they linger around a little bit longer and that is okay. It's this idea of carrying a sort of a heavy bag on our shoulder. We can feel these low level desires to eat something, you know, and carry on with our afternoon or carry on with our evening. This is allowing the urge to be there in our body. Then of course, we've got the number of emotions, urges avoided that we either ate 
so that they went away or we distracted ourselves or we can sense ourselves using willpower to resist them. So that's those. And then the number of discovery worksheets completed. I encourage you to complete a discovery worksheet each time you eat something that is different to what you planned. And then the last one is the successful urge worksheet, which is something that I encourage you to do when you experience, when you realize that you have understood what it is like in your body to feel and process, feel and allow that feeling, that urge, that emotion to be there. And just encourage you to do that successful urge worksheet because it's going to reinforce what you have felt and in your brain and it's going to help you get more in tune with that. Now, in addition to all of this, the other thing that we've got going on to support you and to help you stay with doing this work is daily prompts in the Facebook group this month. So you can use those prompts as a part of your daily journaling process. They're questions designed to help you do the work this month to sort of stay in tune, to stay intentional, to stay aware. So you'll see those posts coming into the Facebook group each day as well. All right, that's great. That's what I have for you. If you have any questions when you are watching this training, do put them in the Facebook group, either just jump in there and and ask a question anytime that you want to put hashtag coaching um, or even better tag me. So sort of do just start typing my name in and it should come up and then that's going to tag me and notify me. All right, great. Good luck. And I really hope you enjoy this month's work. Okay, so I hope it was useful for you to get a peek behind the scenes inside of the Academy. Enrollment is open for another week, but come join us right away to lock in the 2021 pricing and get the Managing Self-Sabotage bonus workshop and workbook. Go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash enroll, that's with one L, to find out all the details and enroll to get immediate access to this training and everything that goes with it and so much more. And as I mentioned earlier, as of May, all of the trainings and coaching calls in the Academy will be available to you to listen to in your own time via a private podcast feed, making it easier than ever to learn how to create a relationship with food, yourself and your life that you love. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honoured to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The program offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice-weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community, and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.